thank you for joining us tonight while we are waiting for the rest people to join us. Uh, maybe you could send the link to maybe somebody that you know that, uh, that this can help. Uh, whoever you know is within your circle of influence that you can invite. This would be a good time. And uh, to let them know that we are having Bible study tonight on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And and I'd like you to get your writing materials. Today we're going to focus on Second Corinthians chapter eight. We're going to do like a verse by verse study. I've not done that for a long time, so I really enjoy doing this. We just go verse by verse, step by step, precept upon precept, and and just to get understanding and glean from second Corinthians chapter eight. So yeah. that's what we're going to do. I don't remember doing that for a while now, but we're going to exegete, exegete, exegete it by going from scripture to scripture. So please help me send the link to any family member that you know, or friends or loved ones, co-workers. I'm sure they'll benefit uh, from what we are going to discuss this evening. Uh, thank you for joining us, wherever you're joining us from, we're glad you're able to make it this evening. Some of our team are in a conference in Alabama. I think they'll be back home uh, uh, by Friday. Some of them Friday, some of them Thursday. And, and while we're waiting, also please don't forget our marriage seminar it's on Saturday. I'm really, really looking forward to it. And mind you now, it's not limited to our church members. They don't have to be church members. I think, will you help me bring healings to marriages? Uh, some people are really going through in their marriages, in their relationship, and they need a third party, you know. Some couples try to figure it among themselves. They are not able to do that. But me being a third party and the voice of objectivity, I can really bring clarity and help people to get better. And plus, uh, the length of time I was, I was married, it really helped me uh, immensely. So please, if you are married or you are engaged or you are go or you're not yet engaged, but maybe uh, you desire to and you want to learn more, it'd be great to talk about that. So, well, children will not come because it's, we're going to talk about things that we don't want our children to be exposed to. So you may have to find a babysitter for this one here. So they wouldn't have to, uh, so we can be free to talk about how we can make our marriages uh, better, and more holistic and things like that. So please, and then say, what about couples bring couple or friends brings friends? Uh, if you can just get on the phone, share the link with people. Uh, Sister Delithia did a video. So every time you see it, like and share. Every time you see the video or any promotional, like and share. Uh, yeah. That's where you're helping us to spread the word. It don't cost you anything. Just like it, share it, and uh, together we can help other marriages. You know, when we help to bring healings and wholeness to other people's marriages, it, it's a seed that we are sowing. You know, so for me, it's not about numbers. Numbers represent a different thing, but it represents the number of people, homes, marriages that we are helping to bring healing to. So please help me. You know a friend, you know a co-worker, you know a family member uh, that will benefit from the teaching on Saturday morning by 10 o'clock is about meeting your spouse's needs. What are the needs of the man? What are the men's greatest needs in the relationship? What are the woman's greatest needs in the relationship? So we're going to talk about that. And, uh, and we're going to bring it from biblical perspective. That's our worldview. So that people can get an understanding and revelation. And then find healing and wholeness in the process. So please help me get the word out. But having said that, can we just take some time to just bless the Lord. Just exalt him for... Bring it on to midweek. Today's Wednesday. And we've seen God's favor. 
and God's goodness. Can we all thank the Lord together? Can we pray and thank him together? Father, we honor your son, Jesus. We bless you. We adore you. We magnify you. We give you the glory that is due to this morning. You are our father. You are our king. Thank you that we have a father in you. You are such a loving father. You are such a compassionate father. You love us unconditionally. There are no strings attached to your love. As a matter of fact, your love frees us to be who we are. Thank you for loving us without any attachment to me, without any strings attached. You love us because you choose to love us. And we thank you. Thank you that we are not alone. We enjoy your presence. We enjoy our relationship with you. Hallelujah. You love us intentionally. And we give you glory. You are intentional about our family, about our children, about our health. Here is about our Father. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. 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 In John chapter 16, Amen. Jesus says when the Holy Spirit comes, that he will teach us. He is the master teacher. And I want us to pray tonight and say, Holy Spirit, I want you to teach me. I want you to open my eyes. Give me Amen. understanding. Help me, make me of a quick understanding. Help me to be able to comprehend and to grasp the word of God as it has been taught tonight. Will you ask him tonight, say, Holy Spirit, teach me, open up my eyes, open up my understanding, give me revelation knowledge, let me see the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I, we pray tonight that you teach us. Let's pray together, church. We are praying together. Holy Spirit, teach us tonight. Let the word fall on a good ground, producing understanding, producing revelation knowledge. Let the scale fall from our eyes. The veil is taken up, and we are quickened in our inner man, and we have revelatory knowledge, and we have understanding. You are the teacher of the church. Yes, you are. You are the one that received from the Father, and you give it to us. We thank you and we bless you tonight for the spirit of understanding and revelation knowledge from the pages of your word. Like the disciples on their way to Emmaus, the Bible said that the, the word began to burn within their heart and then their eyes were open. The Bible says Jesus opened up, friend, their eyes were open. I pray as the word of God is open tonight, our eyes will be open tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Will you pray for me tonight? Say, Holy Spirit, anoint my teacher, to anoint my pastor, to my teach pastor. me. Use him, flow through him, give him the right words. Help him go in the most needed area tonight. That will bring clarity, that will bring wisdom, that will bring understanding. Hallelujah. Lord, Holy Spirit, I cooperate with you. I partner with you. Help me tonight to effectively communicate your mind. Help me to digress in diverse areas. Area with prophetic accuracy and, and simplicity of the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. I yield myself to you tonight. My vocal cords, go through me, speak through me, speak through me. Let wisdom come to us through the practice of your word tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone say amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, Thank you for joining us today. We are so grateful that you could join us this evening. So I would like you to take your Bible. We are coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and, and from verse number 1 through 7. We are going to go verse by verse and uh, we are going to break it down and get understanding of it. Then we're going to summarize it. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 uh, from verse number 1. And then we are going to exegete it. We're going to take one verse, then discuss it, flesh it out, 
and then go to the next verse. So I'm going to start by reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 8 from 1 through 7 in the Passion Translation. And here is what it says. Beloved ones, we must tell you about the grace God poured out upon the churches of Macedonia. For even during a season of severe difficulty, tremendous suffering, and extreme poverty, their super abundant joy overflowed into an act of extravagant generosity. For I can verify or I can testify that they spontaneously gave, not only according to their means, but far beyond what they could afford. They actually begged us for the privilege of sharing in this ministry of giving to God's holy people who are living in poverty. They exceeded our expectations by first dedicating themselves fully to the Lord and then to us according to God's pleasure. That is why we appeal to Titus since he was the one who got you started and encouraged you to give so he could help you complete this generous undertaking on your behalf. You do well and excel in every respect in unstoppable faith, in power preaching, in revelation knowledge, in your passionate devotion, and in sharing the love we have shown to you. So make sure that you also excel in grace-filled generosity. Wow. So we're going to, uh, so why is Paul writing this? Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. Uh, so Macedonia is a city in Philippi. Uh, Macedonia is a city within uh, Philippi. Uh, Thessalonia is also a city within the Philippi metropolis. So Paul wrote also to the Philippian church. It's like of all the churches that Paul planted, his model church was the Macedonian church, the church within um, within the uh, context of Philippi. There were about three different cities that makes up uh, Philippi, but the Philip, the churches in Philippi were his model church. I mean, he keep writing to them. Uh, he said, you guys keep giving to me. You are always looking for an avenue to be a blessing to me. You are looking for a way to sow in my life. Uh, to help me, and uh, and so he just you know there was such he so he's used, so you always use the Macedonian church in Philippi to challenge and to encourage the Corinthian church. So the first thing he's talked about, he said, "Look, Corinthian guys, num verse number one." He said, "I want you to pay attention to the Macedonian grace. What is the Macedonian grace?" As a matter of fact, during prayer, I always pray that the Macedonian grace rests upon Overcomers Christian Fellowship. Man. So what is the Macedonian grace? Because he said, look, he was talking to the Corinthian church. He said, I want you guys to pay attention to the grace that was poured out on the church, the Macedonian church. He said, I want you to learn from that very grace. I want you to learn from their story and their example. So Paul is saying to the Corinthian church, I want you guys to pay attention to what he says is, you do well, look, verse number one, rather. Beloved ones, uh oh, I've changed my listing. Uh, beloved ones, we must tell you about the grace God poured out upon the churches of Macedonia. So there was this grace that rested upon the churches in Macedonia. Well, this grace can rest upon a church. This grace can rest upon a family. This grace can rest upon an individual. There was this grace that everything that was happening in the Macedonian church was as a result of this grace. The grace on the Macedonian church was having an effect, was producing something in their lives. So I pray that this same grace is resting upon overcomers, is resting upon your family and that this grace is resting upon you as an individual as well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Okay, so now let's go to verse number two. In verse number one, he said, guys, pay attention to this particular grace. God poured this grace on the Macedonian church. So let's see what this grace did. By the way, what is the giving grace? For even during a season of severe difficulty, tremendous suffering, and extreme poverty, their superabundant joy overflowed into an act of extravagant generosity. Wow. He's saying this grace produced something. Wow. So if you are a carrier of this grace, <coughs> what, what should be the outcome? Well, if I'm a carrier of the Macedonian grace, if a family is a carrier of the Macedonian grace, if a church is a carrier of the Macedonian grace, what does it produce? What is the effect of the Macedonian grace? And what is the Macedonian grace? I submit to you, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2, that the Macedonian grace is a grace for generosity. Mm. So it, when the Macedonian grace rests upon the church, it means the church is very <laughs> liberal, very generous, very open-handed, uh, 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 open heart hearted, you know, their hearts are open, their hands are open, they are very liberal. <laughs> so, one of the telltale signs that a church <coughs> or an individual is has their Macedonian grace resting upon them is that they don't struggle when it comes to being generous, when it comes to sharing what God has given to them. That's one of the telltale signs that the Macedonian church is on an individual level. That if they struggle to give, if they find it difficult to give, it's an indication that this grace is lacking and missing in their lives. When you are a carrier of the Macedonian grace, look at what the Bible says. It says, for I bear record with them, for even during a season of severe difficulty, tremendous suffering, and extreme poverty. In other words, if you look at their situation, if anybody from natural point of view has a reason not to give, the Macedonian church have a good reason not to give. Why? Because of their situation. Because of what they were going through. There was hardship. There was difficulty that they were dealing with. Economic deprivation. Economic difficulties. Yet, the scripture tells us, if they, based on their condition, they did not allow that to stop them from being generous. We, you know, some people today, you know, another person we can look at is the widow's might. In Luke 21, Jesus talks about the <coughs> widow. Now, why does the Bible specifically tell us widow? Well, her condition. No husband, maybe no children. No source of income. It's not like today where you have social security. She goes to church and she takes the two um two dollars that she has. That's the only thing she has. And she drops it in the offering plate. And Jesus must have been paying attention to the way they were given. And he called the disciples and said, This woman has given more than anybody else. She's given more. Not in terms of amount, but in terms of what she's got left. If I have a million dollars and I give uh, 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 $10,000 and people are clapping as, oh, he's very generous. Yeah, but I still have about uh, $990,000 to go home to. This woman has nothing to go back home to. She just gave everything and Jesus commended her. Jesus use that to provoke the disciples and say, look at her. So the, another question is that, is it right for us to encourage people to grow in generosity? Is it right for us to talk about money? And I always say that because there are some people who have the opinion that uh, if you talk about money, I'm leaving. Don't talk about money. Well, Paul <laughs> didn't think so. Paul didn't think there was anything wrong with encouraging people to grow in their generosity or no. encouraging them to increase in their generosity. We see that because of 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, uh, chapter 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, uh, Galatians chapter 6, 
Paul said, those who are taught the word should share good things with the one teaching them. So, so many passages, Paul talked about money. As a matter of fact, from biblical statistics, they believe that Jesus talked more about money than hell or heaven. You know, but here's what I found that people who are generous don't complain about you teaching on giving. It is people who struggle or who don't want to give that don't want to hear that. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. You know, so <laughs> we throw scripture, we saw that. <laughs> Paul encouraged people. So the Bible says that Paul uh, uh, Paul was saying that they were going through suffering. They were going through tremendous suffering, severe difficulty. The Bible is also so an extreme poverty. Look at the superlative that is used to describe their situation. If anybody has a reason to say, God understand, I should not give it them. I've had people say, well, Pastor, when my finances improve, I will give. Mm -hmm. I will tithe. I will be generous. But right now, God understands. I don't make enough money. That's some of the excuses some people give. When my situation changes, yeah, I'll be more generous, Pastor. When I make a whole lot more, I will give. But the Philippian, Philippian church didn't think so. The Macedonian church didn't think so. They said, no. Based on where we are, uh, we're going through a test, you know. And that's another thing. When you are going through financial challenges, sometimes God is going to test your heart. Amen. He's going to test your heart to see, are you trusting me? Mm -hmm. Even though you don't have all the money you need, do you still trust me? Trust me. Amen. You know, and some people fail the test. But thank God for helping you and I that we will always pass the test in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Look at what happened. The Bible says even though they were poor, even though they had extreme poverty, tremendous suffering, severe difficulties, he said they are super abundant, abund abundant joy overflowed into an act of extravagant general. Look at this quality. Extreme uh, poverty, severe difficulties, and, and, and challenging moment, yet the Bible say they were not generous, but extravagant <laughs> generosity. Extravagant generosity is going over and above, um, going over and beyond. That's what the Macedonian church did. They went way beyond. Overflowing. They are giving produced pain in them, but they did not allow it to stop them. You know? And sometimes we look at that situation. Oh, you know, uh, uh, this is due and that is due. But they did not allow it to stop them from being generous, from being a blessing to somebody. Have you ever been in a in a tough financial situation and then God sent somebody to you who uh, also need a little bit you have? And sometimes it's a test. God tests you to see if you will trust him. Yeah. You know? And uh, so let's go further to verse number three. He says, despite their situation, they still overflowed into act of extravagant, extravagant generosity. And then he said, for verse three, for I can verify that they spontaneously gave, not only according to their means, but far beyond what they could afford. Wow. They were given beyond their ability. Amen. Oh, thank you. Somebody says so true. Thank you for your encouragement. They went over and beyond. They went over. They were not. It, they were not doing it because it was convenient for them. Oftentimes, I've met people who are looking for their situation to improve before they give to God or before they obey God. You know, God will give you an instruction: be a blessing to that brother, be a blessing to that sister, or go mm -hmm. do their hair, or buy grocery for that person. And you say, mm -hmm. "Oh yes, Lord, where my situation improves." <laughs> or God will tell you, maybe somebody in the church has been a blessing to you, and God say, "Well, you, I want you to be a blessing to them." Yeah, I'll do it when my situation changes. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4, that if you observe the wind, if you look at the cloud, you will never plant seeds. You will never obey God. If you look at your circumstances, if you look at your situation, can I tell you something? Do you know this back to school is an opportunity for you to say, I want to be a blessing. 
This is an avenue. This is an opportunity. The Macedonian church did not allow their problem to talk them out of participating Amen. from being generous. They did not allow it to stop them. No, they were not going to let that happen. So God is provoking the Corinthian church. I believe he's also provoking the overcomers church. He's provo provoking all believers that we need to glean from the church at Macedonia. Amen. We need to glean from them. And the Bible says, I can verify, verse number three, that they went over and beyond. God wants us to do things only, not only when it's convenient. Do you know it was not convenient for Jesus to go to the cross? It was not convenient for him to be beaten and to him. It was not convenient for him. But he just did it out of love for you and I. If you are waiting for your situation to improve, before you can obey a kingdom initiative or an instruction from God, you will never obey God. Mm -hmm. You will never obey God. And it's not really about the seed. It's about your heart. It's about I... the condition of your heart. So he say, Paul say, I can be, a, I can attest to this. One. See, a giver is not known when they have a lot. A giver is known with the little bit that they have. Amen. Praise God. If you want to know, I'm telling you, I test my son sometimes. I want to make sure that my son is a generous person. Because he's going to get married tomorrow. I don't want my, his wife to say, oh, this guy is a cheap, a cheap wife. Stingy, tight, fisted, <laughs> clothes. No, I don't want him to be like that. I wanted somebody who is generous. Today I was meditating on the story of uh, Eliezer and Rebecca, when Eliezer went to go find a wife for Isaac, here is what Eliezer said. He prays to God, the woman that will give me water to drink and also give water to my camels, that will be the wife that will, that, that will be in the lineage of my servant Abraham, that will marry Isaac. When I was meditating on that, the Holy Spirit was saying to me, Eliezer know that his, his master Abraham is a generous man. He's Sarah, it's a generous woman. Isaac is a generous person. And Eliezer say, I don't want a stingy person in the lineage of Abraham. No. Amen. For me, I was talking to somebody, it's a single person. I said, when you want to get married, make sure the man is a generous man. Amen. Make sure the woman is a generous woman. Tight word and cheap. I mean, let me let me use a simple. Uh, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Amen. Amen. No. All this. One of the qualities is generosity. That's Amen. one of the qualities I look for when I was going to get married to my wife. That that one stood out. Her generosity. Somebody who has an open heart and a large heart. You know, yeah. she was very generous towards the people in Overcomers. She was yeah. generous yeah. towards me. She was generous yeah. towards our church, towards my family. She was very, very generous. Yeah. And I said, I don't want, so Abraham said, no, whoever will go over and beyond. That's what Rebecca did. He said, I'm going to give you water to drink, but I'm, I'm also going to water your camel. I'm not going to wait for you to tell me to do I love people who take initiatives, who are yeah, self-driven, yeah, who are self-motivated, who mm -hmm. do not wait for you to tell them everything before they do that. I like leaders who take initiative. I mean, I like leaders that I'm playing catch up with. No, have you done this? Oh, 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 we're supposed to do that? What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> You know, Jesus. Oh, 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 you know, you, oh, you see trash on the floor and you just walk right over it. Like we're waiting for a committee to pick up the trash. In other words, I love people that initiate things, that are driven, that are, you know, you know, self-motivated. You don't have to tell them, oh, are you going to work today? Uh, I, no, man, you should be driven, you know, and, and, and take the initiative. Yeah. You know? yeah. I like people like that around me, people who take initiatives. Problem solvers, people who solve problems. Problems, and uh, So you can't wait till your situation improves before you obey God. If you wait, you're going to wait a long time. In Luke chapter 16, verse number 10, 11, and 12, <laughs> Jesus said that if you are not faithful with the little bit, how can God trust you with a whole bunch? 
Oh. You know, uh, John D. Rockefeller said something. He said there was a time, John D. Rockefeller, he's a billionaire, he's still today, he's still making money. Uh, he was into oil and gas and steel industry, you know, in the earlier century. Very successful man. His trust fund is still going on. John D. Rockefeller, in one of our small group discussion in the church, one of those materials, he said the reason why I, I'm, I'm now a multi-millionaire, I don't struggle to give a million dollars, is because when I was making $10 a week, I could give God a dollar. He said, if I struggle back then to give God a dime out of a dollar, then it's going to be very difficult for me to give a, a million or $10 million out of $100 million. It's true, it's true. It's touching little things. I will encourage you to test your children. See if they will test the test of generosity. Test them and see how they react. Give them something. Go be a blessing to somebody. Hey, I'm giving you money. Go to the store. You're going to buy things, but you're not going to buy for yourself. You're going to pick a friend and buy them a gift. And see if they will hoard it. If they hoard it, you got your work cut out for your moms and dad. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing, you know, uh, we need to teach them. We need to teach them to appreciate their mom, appreciate their dad, and uh, teach them now, even while they are 10 years old, give them money, Mother's Day is coming, go buy me Mother's Day gift. That way they become used to it now. So when they become adult, they'll know it's a lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know? Man. Yeah. So let's go to verse number four. Oh, look at verse number four. You see, they actually begged us. Serious? Begging us. Oh, thank you. Somebody said good teaching. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Shalane. Thank you. Thank you so much. He said, verse number four says, the Macedonian church begged us for the privilege. Are you kidding me? He said, they begged us. Paul, please, don't deny us the opportunity. Don't deny us the privilege. Don't talk us out of generosity. We want to participate. We want to share in the responsibility of providing for the poor people, you know, in the Corinthian church. No, don't deny us that. The Bible said they begged us. Say, please, Paul. Yes. I'm going to make it in the world. He said they actually begged us for the privilege of sharing in this ministry of giving. How? They begged us. They said, no, you can't talk me out. <laughs> I see this every year when we do our first fruit. Some people come to me and say, oh, Pastor, this year, mm -mm, I'm going through things. I'm not giving. You People talk themselves out of it. Oh, Pastor, I'm tired of it. I'm not giving this year. Oh, I got this thing coming. I'm going through this. Uh, I need this. I need that. Can't do it this year. The Macedonian church were looking for opportunity. There was a church in Abuja, in my country. Uh, some of the members of the church gathered together. They met with pastor. They said, pastor, here's what we want to talk to you about. Before you go to church to announce a need, will you come to us? Will you take the need, put it on this particular side of the wall? And before it is announced to the church, we will go there first of all. And, and look at it and pick which part we are going to take care of. If whenever the church has a financial need, don't announce it, just put it there on the, on the, over there. We will go there every week. We will look at that to see what the needs are. And we will solve those very problems. Hallelujah. And that's what one, one pastor was. This is that's how they do in their church. Wonderful. If there's a need, put, post it there. And then after, if, if the needs are, if, if we have more, then you can go out there and announce it to the congregation. Yeah. And then the congregation heard it and said, well, we too are going to be looking at that board because you are not going to deny us the opportunity. How many no. believers see giving as an opportunity? Some people don't see yeah. that. 
They, they, some people don't see that way. They see it as, oh, they see giving as is designed to deplete me, to reduce me, mm. to, to subtract from me, to take mm. away from me. That's because such people lack revelation and lack mm. understanding. Do you know mm. that if your hands are open to give, your hands are also open to receive mm. as well? And glory. Thank you. People who are tight-fisted and with close hands, if you don't open your hand, you can't okay. receive either. If no way. You know, right. if nothing leaves you, nothing is coming back to you. Back to you. You know? And, yeah. and this is so powerful. They begged, you know, can I tell you something? I've been in a church whereby they, they, there was a, they said, oh, we have a budget for $50,000 or $100,000. And people gave, and it was now $100,000. And some people say, well, even though the budget is met, I haven't given mine yet. I'm going to participate okay. in it. I, I, well, the, the budget is already met. Okay, mine is not there. I want to be part of what is going. Look at what the, the Bible said. They said they want to share in the responsibility. To me, that should be our attitude as believers, that we should want to share in the financial responsibility of the upkeep of our own church. These are our children. Amen, amen. I want to participate. I want to get involved. I want to be part of what God is doing in this house. I want to be part of it. To me, one of the signs of maturity is that a matured person is one who wants to share in the responsibility of the house. Amen. Thank you, Lord. When my son was one year old, two years old, three years old, four years old, he was on the on he was sitting on the other side of the dining table. In other words, he just sits down there and we feed him. We do everything for him. But as he as he began to grow, uh, five years, six years. Well, I began to teach him. Yeah, you got to, you got to, you got to, you know. Feed yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You uh -huh. got to pay your own, take pay your own, pay your way. I don't know how to pay put it. You know? <laughs> You've got to shame the responsibility. Yes, you can't shame the financial responsibility. You know, you, you are not working here. But there's certainly a way in this house that you can, something you can do to show that you appreciate being a part of this family here. Amen. Amen. Such as taking the trash out, such as yeah. learning to wash dishes, such as yeah. sweeping the floor, such as right. uh, vacuuming the floor, such as uh -huh. no, you are not just going to sit here today when I will, I will put his food for him. And uh, then I, one the other day I put his food in a plate for him. He said, Daddy, let me know when he's ready. I said, I should come and let his playing video, video at me. I should come. Anyway, <laughs> let me. Uh, 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 I said, sit your behind right here. I said, as a matter of fact, you go warm your food now. So you know the yeah. microwave. You have fingers like yeah. I do. You are tall yeah. enough to reach it. Yeah. Come and help yourself. Lord. What am I telling him to do? Uh -uh. I will not do for, for you what I know you are capable yeah. of doing Don't for yourself. Yes. Right. You, know, you need to, and I teach you, you need to take responsibility about keep this house uh -huh. clean. You know, yep. clean this house, clean. wash your dishes. One time he mm -hmm. ate and he dropped it there. I said, do we have a dishwashing committee in this house? Come oh, on. Go and wash it up. Yep. 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 Make up your bed. What am I saying? Share in the responsibility yes. of this yes. house. Yes. You are a yes. member of this family. Be All a right. responsible member of this family. Okay. Your maturity as a member of this family is determined by you taking ownership and responsibility. Amen. God. Amen. The Macedonian church, the Bible says, they, they begged Paul and said, we want to share in their responsibility. We want to be part of what God is doing. As believers, I believe that it is our responsibility to say, I want to shame the obligations of this house here. I want to shame the responsibility of this house here. I want to be part of it. That's why I tell parents, you need to tell your children, you come, you have a job, you make money, but then you don't pay no light bill in this house. You don't contribute to this. Now, if you say, no, I don't want you to do that, that's on you. 
But I, but to me, I think you need to learn how to pay bills yeah, while you are here yeah. right now. So, yeah. so, so uh, by the time you go to live on your own, you already know the oh, system. Okay. You are already in the system. It. Rather than yeah. you just folding your hands, waiting there for me to do grocery and come here, cook for you and feed you. No, that ain't going to happen in this very house here, man. It will never happen in this house here. Everybody going to carry their own load in this very house here. Yeah, yeah. You know? I told my son, I said, okay, when the garage door opens and I come in and you are in the house, I want you to leave everything you are doing, come to the car, tell me, Daddy, good afternoon, welcome back, and take my bag and take it. Yeah. What am I saying? Right. Do something, yeah. man. Don't sit yeah. down and be playing video game all day long. Mm -mm. Huh. That will not happen here. So also there are people who are members of a local church too, and all they want to do is just, uh, just, Enjoy what the house provides. I'm not serving. I'm not going to do nothing. Okay. You will just feed me, warm my food up for me, and spoon feed me, and okay. clean my mouth up, and bring me dessert, wow. rub my feet, and sing yeah. how great thou art to me. That's what I want. There is nothing like that. Somebody say, even in Freetown, nothing is free in Sierra Leone. I would want to raise responsible. So as believers, we are responsible citizens of the kingdom of God. That's who we are. Amen. We are responsible citizens of the kingdom of God. We are responsible members of the local church. I am a responsible member of Overcomers Christian Fellowship. What makes me a responsible member? I serve. I pray for my church. I share in the financial responsibility of the church. I'm not sitting down there and say, let them do it. Yeah, they got it. Let them do it. Won't he do it? Yeah, he will do it. Yeah, he's going to do it through you too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you for your encouragement, man. I'm preaching so good. Yes, I'm you, yes you are. Thank you. So verse number five says, they exceeded our expectations. Oh, here is another powerful truth in verse number five. He said, they exceeded our expectation by first. Uh, the, here is the number one thing they did. Here is what made them so successful. Verse number five said, they exceeded our expectation by first dedicating themselves fully to the law and then to us. This is so powerful. You know why? One of the marks, or one of the proofs that an individual have fully given themselves to the Lord is that they don't struggle to give themselves and their resources. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible said the Macedonian church, what, why they were able to do was because, number one, they were already committed to Jesus. They were already committed to God. They said, God, we yeah. love you. We, we appreciate you. We are committed to you. We believe in you. And, and, and we believe in what you're doing. And, and so it was easy. If a man or a woman hasn't, oh, let me put it this way. If, if, if a woman doesn't have a man's heart, he will not invest in her. Mm. True, <laughs> true. Yeah. One of the proofs so is, true. because the Bible says where your treasure is, where your money is, where I your mean, wallet I is, where your purse is, is. That's where your heart is. I I so if a man tells you, I love you, but he don't give you nothing. I, I'm, I gotta, what's love got to do with that, man? Oh, yes. You know? Or you want us to go on a date, we go on a date, and then when it's time to pay the bills, you, you <laughs> go to this restroom there for like, mm. you are not coming out. Mm. Mm. Jesus. One lady was telling me one day, she, she went out with this guy, and, and just before when they're about to bring the bill, he said, oh, he's got to take a phone call in the car. He goes down, sits down there so she can pay. That was good. For me, after that day, that's that's a date. That goodbye. That it's all over with, man. That's right. That's right. You know? Amen. Yeah. You know? Because giving is proof that we have the nature of God in us. That is it. Generosity yeah. is an indication that we have God's nature residing on the inside, on the inside of, of me. Of Amen. And, and when you are dating a woman, when you are dating a man, that is a good time for you to find out if they are generous or not. Not. You know? 
And uh, so that's one of the qualities to look out for in a uh, mate. Are they generous? Are they kind-hearted? Are they open-hearted? If mm. not, you and your children will be eating pinto beans. I'm telling you, man. If you <laughs> He said they exceeded our expectation by first dedicating themselves to the law. You know, your commitment to God will determine your commitment to the local church. If you are not committed to God, you are not going to be committed to the local church. Let me share something with you. The reason why some people in the church, they, they say, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to serve in this area. And then we don't see them serve in that area. They don't show up in that area. They sign up their name. Oh, I'm going to serve wow. in the media room or in the sound room or in the children's ministry. But they don't show up. It's a commitment issue. Number one, they are not as committed to Jesus as they, they, they believe. Because my commitment to God is what determines my commitment to, to, to other people or to serving here. You cannot be committed to God and not be committed to his church. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, I'm going to serve in this area, but then you never show up there. Or, or you show up and you show up whenever you get ready. And you show up with the attitude of, they better be glad I even show up. We say, well, you need to be there an hour before service starts. Well, no, I show up whenever. It's a commitment issue. It shows that you are not really as committed to Jesus as you do. Because my commitment to Jesus makes me sacrifice. Generosity is not yeah. just money. It's my time. Yeah, Amen. I make my time available to God to promote Jesus, to, yeah. to teach children. You know, some people sign up to say, I'm going to walk in the children's ministry, but then they don't even show up. Or they show up when uh, the service, uh, you know, when the, the class starts. They just run there. And say, it's, a, it's a heart issue. Their heart is not into it. Because wow. when God has your heart, you remember in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 3, he said, my son, give me your wallet. Mm. Oh, okay. you guys missed that one then. Give me your heart. Okay, then. Yeah, you need to tell my son. It's not after your wallet, it's after your heart. Because if he has your heart, then giving to him will not be a problem. Amen. Amen. Giving to God, giving to people, being a blessing to people will not be a problem. Some people, for them to give is like they're going through a funeral, like death. Oh, this is difficult, man. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Giving, when I'm generous with my time, I don't mind being available for a kingdom initiative. I don't mind yeah. making myself available to promote a kingdom cause, whether it's yeah. back to school or any of it. I don't mind doing my part because I am doing it for God. It's proof that he yeah. has my heart. I'm committed to him. That's yeah. proof of that. My, your commitment to the things of God is predicated upon your commitment to God. Amen. If you are not committed to God, it's going to be difficult. Paul said, the reason why the Macedonian did not struggle uh, with their time, with their talent, with their resources, is because they have fully given themselves over to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because when you've given yourself over to God, you're not going to struggle. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in in being available for God. Let's go further. Uh, verse number six says, uh, verse number six, see, that is why we appeal to Titus, since he was the one who got you started and encouraged you to give so he could help you complete this generous undertaking on your behalf. Verse number seven. Oh, okay. I love this one here. He right. said, it's talking to the Corinthian church. He said, you guys are doing well when it comes to, uh, in every area, oh, you guys are doing well. In faith, oh, there is no other church that Paul started where they were powerful and strong in faith like the Corinthian church. He said, you guys, when it comes to faith, you have unstoppable faith. He said, yeah, you are people of faith. And then the other one, he said, oh, when it comes to preaching, oratory, the Corinthian church, the preaching was just something else. I mean, anybody who give the microphone, they could gaggle the word and preach. I mean, they were so good. So you guys are good in oratory, in faith, in revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge here is talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The, the, the Corinthian church operated word of knowledge, word of wisdom, healing, miracles, raising the dead. I mean, miracles were taking place in the Corinthian church. He said, but they say it's a bit complete. Uh, oh, verse number seven. 
Hold on. In revelation, in your passionate devotion, and in sharing the love we have shown to you. So, make sure that you also excel in grace-filled generosity. Wow. And this is the area where I'm going to I'm going to part and then I'm going to hear feedback from you guys, the questions or comments or what stood out to you or I mean I'd love to hear that, you know. Uh, what you know what are you thinking, you know? And but look at that. He's applauding the Corinthian church saying, man, these guys, man, when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, prophetic accuracy, they were on point. They were yeah. good. When it comes to faith, powerful preaching, devotion, coming, they were, I mean, they were all of that. He said, but there is an area where you guys are struggling in. He said, generosity. You guys are not generous people. You guys are not generous uh, you know, so 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 that's why I'm writing this to provoke you, the Corinthian church. You say, you, you, in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you are number one. Faith, you are number one. Powerful preaching, you are all number one. Oratory, you are number one. He said, but when it comes to grace-filled generosity, in other words, giving that emanates from the place of grace. In other words, the reason why I am giving, my giving is a response to the grace of God. I love that church. The Macedonian church while giving, while generous of themselves, of their time, of their talents. You know why? Because they have a deep appreciation for grace, for what Jesus did. In other words, what motivated the Corinthian church they were not, it's not for somebody to clap for them and say, oh, they are such givers. No. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, uh, uh, one of my friend, uh, my friend in UK, is, uh, he, he met a lady that he's getting married to, and he was telling me he went to visit her house in Nigeria, and the lady has so many trophies in the house, so many trophies in the house. And she asked the lady, what's this trophy for? Oh, every year they give a trophy to the top 100 givers in the church. They actually have a ceremony. Oh, my goodness. And then they announce the name of the people and they oh. go there and people are clapping, people are oh. clapping and cheering and excited. And then the people say, oh, next year, I'm going to make sure I'm one of the one, top 100. Oh. I will be one of them next year. I'm going to do whatever it takes. People, and then they come outside, they give them a trophy and then they take picture with the pastor. Yay. So he said, this lady has trophy. The whole house is, he said, what is this? He said, they are trophies for my giving. Wow. Okay. So now that you have gotten trophy from your giving, so heaven does not need to reward you anymore because you already got your reward. <laughs> right, right. Your motivation. So why you are giving was because you want people to clap for you. You want people to notice you. And if you, you stop grandstanding and stop placating to the people in the gallery, your motivation should be God. I'm giving because yeah. I appreciate what you have done for me. Amen. Yeah. Yes, That's amen. what's driving me. That's what's motivating me. My See, the motive for why you do what you do matters. God rewards motive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People may see you giving here, and that's wonderful, but deep down in your inside, why? Why are you doing that? Uh-huh. You know? Why? And that we have to announce, oh, yes, you know, um, this hundred people, yes, and uh, trophy. Man, you might as well go put that trophy in the trash, man. You know, I'm not looking for a trophy from man. Amen. <laughs> I, I want God to, I want God's trophy. You ever want Amen. man's trophy Amen. or God's trophy? I think God's trophy will take you a lot farther in life than any human trophy. Yes, that's right. right. That's yeah. right. Their, their motive is pure. They, 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 the Bible says they, that you also excel in grace filled generosity the reason why their motivation for giving was because god you have been so good to me That's Some right. of the time i didn't have a job today you've given me a job now i have an income i am so grateful there was a time i have no place to live i was homeless 
But today I have a place to stay. There was a time I, I was in sin. I was in bondage. I, I was a drug are. addict. I was an alcoholic. But Jesus Christ, you changed me. You washed me. You took away the appetite for, for that type of lifestyle. And, and, and I'm responding to you, to grace. Grace has changed me. Grace has empowered me. Grace has transformed me into another man, into another woman. And everything I do today... Is because of my gratitude. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Yeah. This was what motivated the Macedonian church. It was gratitude. I'm Amen. so grateful. Amen. I'm so thankful. You cannot be grateful and not be generous. Grat Amen. Generosity Amen. will always flow from the heart of what? Gratitude. Gratitude. Amen. A grateful person is a generous person. Yes. Yes. Anybody who is not grateful is not generous. Anybody who is not generous is not grateful. Because one of the ways I express my gratitude to God is, is I want to shame the responsibility. I want to use my time for a kingdom initiative. I want to use my, how can I use my talent to add value, to make this house better? In other words, whatever I'm good at, this church is not going to lack it because I'm going to deploy my talent to enhance what God is doing in this very house. I'm going to surrender it. I'm going to make it available. I'm going to make my time available for God. You know why? Because it's coming from the place of gratitude. Amen. 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 So let me tell you this story, and then I'm, and then I'm, 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 we're going to, and then I'm going to open it up for question and and answers. If anybody has question or something like that, or comment, and I'm going to encourage you not to prolong, make your comment short, so that you won't go on and on and on and on. We gotta go eat dinner, you know. So that's my thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, so, so let me tell you something. Right? So I went to I went to this conference. And when I went to this conference, uh in this church where the conference was, you are allowed to bring coffee into the sanctuary. And mm -hmm. uh, so somebody was so somebody spilled coffee on the floor. This guy rushed down there, had a trash bag, and I said, No, 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 don't worry, I got this, I got this. He cleaned it. And he's always there, very fun, excited, very happy. You know, he's doing it with a great attitude. He's doing it with joy, like what a privilege. I get to serve the people of God. I don't have to do it, but I get to do it. I think that's one phrase I want us to learn, that <clears throat> I, I don't have to do it. I get I to, get do, to it. do it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Because that's when he's saying, man, what a privilege. What a, what a joy. What a joy, you know, yeah. that I get to do that. So... And so, I, so I, as the following day, he's there again with a trash. He has a black trash bag. No, I'm just here to serve you. So during lunch, I asked him a question. I said, man, what do you do, man? He said, oh, I, I have my own business. I said, what kind of business? He told me. I said, wow. I said, so like, uh, how big is your company? He said, oh, in a year we do like, uh, you know, I can't remember what I say, five or six million dollars every year. He employs over over 20 people in his company. I say, you do? He said, yeah. And I said, but what are you doing here? He said, oh. I said, you sweep the floor? He said, yeah. I said, wow. I said, so at your stage? He said, man, you don't understand my story, man. I said, well, tell me your story. He said, oh. He said, I used to be a drug addict. He said, if you see me now, you'll never know I used to be a drug addict. I was homeless. He said, Jesus changed my life. I overcame the drug addiction. Then God began to clean me up and I discovered I have a passion for this line of business and I started it. And, and I got married, I have children now and God has blessed our business beyond my wildest dream. And he said to me, how else can I show my appreciation? Uh -huh. He said, I said, so this company, you are not at work? He said, no. He said, the church I go to, they open up one hour and say, we need volunteer. He said, the first one hour, if you don't hurry up, it's already filled. The first one hour, he said, we are rushing to fill it in. We want to be part of what God is doing. We want to serve God's people. Wow. Yeah. What an attitude. 
You know, the church we, we model after in Church of the Highlands in Alabama, that's the way they are. When they do the conferences or seminars or things, they open it up for an hour. Before you know it, it's already filled. They'll say, no, too bad. It, it, we don't have any more space for it. People are in line. They want to serve. And when we go there, they have a great attitude. They, do, they don't come there and serve like they've been eating, drinking pickle juice all night long. No, <laughs> say, what a joy to serve. So not just serving, but the attitude in which you serve. Not just giving, but the yeah. attitude and the motive with which you do. Serving, I'm telling you, if you see me on Sunday morning, the way I'm rushing to get to church, because I'm so grateful I get to do yeah. Do I get to serve in a local church? To me, the, there's nothing like the local church on planet Earth. I am excited about the local church. I love the local church. I, 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 I'm, the local church is God's hope on earth, and I get to serve there. I, I get to make a difference in people's lives. That's why I get up in the morning, I take a shower, I'm rushing. Most of the times I'm in church, even when my wife was here with all the difficulties we have to go through, sometimes we're in church by 8.30. And our motto is, what a privilege we get. We're not doing this for man. We do it for Jesus. We do it for him. It's for him. That's our motivation. Okay. That's why we go over and beyond. I want to challenge us today. We need to learn to go over and beyond. Don't be a minimum required saints. Don't be a minimum. Do you want, do you want minimum wage salary? No, you don't want a minimum wage salary. I don't want a minimum blessing from God. The Bible says, whatever you measure to God, that's what he, in Luke 6, 38, that whatever, whatever measure you measure to God, that's what he measured. I learned this from Dr. Ivy Hillier. He said, the reason why I'm always on time for God is because I want God to be on time for me. He said, I make no apology when God blesses me because I give God, when, he said, I give God my best. So I, ex I have a justifiable reason to expect him to give me his best. Yeah. There is a question. Did God give you his best in the person of Jesus? A resounding yes. Yeah. Does God deserve us to give him our best? Absolutely. Yes. It should affect our attitude in serving and making a difference. Instead of acting like we're doing the pastor a favor or Pastor Larry a favor, you better be glad. Or people in the media room, or Francis, you better be glad. I even should. That is not a kingdom attitude. Mm -hmm. when we have revelation wow or if you serve in the children's ministry uh sister whitney where you, uh, you better be glad i even showed up that's not mm -hmm. jesus mm -hmm. that's not mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know you know rather is wow what a privilege what wow. a joy you know i'm so fortunate you know that i get to serve in god's house i get to serve god's people Whatever mm -hmm. we do, we should see it as a privilege. Whether it's given, you know. So, so there was a child who could not pay their school fees in the university in Nigeria. And then I, I paid it. And they just kept going on and on and on. And I, my answer to them is, I'm privileged. I am Jeez. privileged. That I have to pay your school fees, that's a privilege. Yeah. You know, he said, why you keep saying it's a privilege? I said, because it is a privilege. There was a time I couldn't do that. There was a time, it, I mean, if you cry to me, I'll cry back to you because we, nobody can help anybody. <laughs> but that that you needed it and I had it, it's a privilege. privilege. We, we must, we, we must not it. see giving as God is trying to reduce me. You know, there are a lot of people when it comes to money, they say, well, when it comes to giving, they say, oh, you better use wisdom. But they don't use wisdom. And you know, but when it comes to giving, hey, you, better, you better use wisdom. You know, what they're telling you is don't give. You know, hoard your money. Hold on to it. Hold tight to it. You know? Uh -huh. no, no, it is a privilege for us. Church, that we get to serve, that we get to use our talent to promote Jesus, that we get to serve on the worship team, that we get to serve in any capacity, children's ministry, parking lot. Oh my goodness, that I get to serve God. You know, Jesus went to the cross and all I have to endure is the heat outside. All I have to endure is the cold outside. I am privileged. I'm going to have a smile. I'm going to serve with gladness. That's what the scripture says in Psalm 100. Serve the Lord with gladness, the scripture tells us. Serve the Lord with gladness means do it with a smile. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, 
I pray tonight <coughs> the Macedonian grace rest upon Overcomers Christian Fellowship. Rest upon Aye. the men, the women, the children. The Macedonian grace rest upon our families. Rest upon us. That we serve with joy, we give with joy, we give with liberally and, 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 and with joy, not, not grudgingly of necessity, that we are not serving out of necessity or grudgingly, and we do it because we see it as a privilege. Amen. A wonderful privilege that we get to partner with Jesus on earth in promoting and advancing his kingdom agenda on earth. We return the glory back to you. We return the honor back to you. Thank you for the work you're doing in our lives. Our hearts are open. Our hands are open. We are liberal. We obey you in whatever you want us to do. That when you tell us, go buy grocery for that person, go fill the up other person tank, buy lunch for them. Them, uh, be a blessing to that person that we don't hurt that we don't see that as oh no they're trying to take away from me no but but that giving and generosity is not designed to take away from us rather it is an opportunity it opens the door it creates margin for God to fill in our lives thank you so much tonight in Jesus name Precious name. Amen and amen. 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 All right. So I don't know if we have an administrator today who is going to be the host for us who can look at that and see if they hey brother Dell, good to see you, sir. Brother uh -huh. Dell, good to see you, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. So if you have a comment you want to make, uh uh or a question you want to ask, uh, I don't know who is going to be our who is the host today that can feel that and moderate that. But while we are getting ready for that, I want to hear feedback from you. How, how did the work? What what stood out to you? What's your take home today? You know, uh, you know, you know that. So God said we need to grow in generosity. Let's grow. Let's grow. Oh. Let's grow in generosity. So don't forget our oh. marriage seminar is on Saturday. Uh, we have. Friday prayer meeting at 7, Saturday at 10 o'clock for the marriage seminar. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. You know, how to meet your spouse's needs. What are the, what are the, what needs does your wife have? What are her greatest needs? And what is your husband's greatest needs? This is going to help you because maybe you've been telling your spouse that they don't get it. But see, they get to hear it from me through the Holy Spirit. They are going to process it differently because I don't have the type of familiarity that you do with your spouse. So it's a great opportunity to take your relationship, for your relationship to grow. Your marriage will never grow if you don't take in new information. If you don't, if you don't have new knowledge, your marriage will remain way. Their marriage is struggling, folks not talking to each other at home because they have needs that have not been met. And, and no matter what they tell their spouse, their spouse don't, don't think it's a big deal. Well, guess what? I get to able to address it and help our marriage uh, to go to it. So it's not just you. Not only do I want you to show up, but uh -huh. will you bring people to, it doesn't matter what denomination, what church they belong. Uh, we want to help marriages. We want to help marriages to get stronger, to get better in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Amen. Jesus. All right, who, who is the administrator tonight? Okay, so that means there's no... So I checked. It's Delethea. I checked the chat and I don't see any questions in the chat. Okay. All right. So I guess that's it. If you have no. a question, just raise your hand and uh, we'll answer them systematically or you can drop it in the chat and I'll read it. Mm -hmm. Or comment. Uh, a lot of the comments were amen. A lot of people agreed and... Yeah, good teaching. Amen. Raise a Diana say yes, sir. Raise a child up in a way that they shall go, and they will not depart from it. Amen. And a lot of encouragement. Amen. Amen. All right. I guess uh, this is a silent night. I think. Uh, <laughs> silent night. <laughs> it's too early. It's too early for silent night. Right. <laughs> Great teaching, you, though. Papa, it was really, really Thank good. Thank you. At least say something. I mean, what's good out there? Yes. It was great teaching. Thank you. I gathered something from it. Thanks very mm -hmm. much. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Pastor, um, 
I want to say, uh, first of all, thank you to Sister Annette, my daddy, for joining tonight. She is in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, wow. Glory to and, God. And also, I want to say, like, First Lady did leave me a great lesson. Like, even though she had the challenges, she had no excuse. I have more excuses than the challenges that she had. So that's my inspiration. So one of you know give my best in in ministry. So I wanted to add that. That's what Amen. stood out. To me. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I would like to. So Wanda is raising her hand up or something. Hey, can y'all hear me? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, I'm on the back row, but thank you, Pastor, for the awesome words tonight. That generosity. I I know of a fact that OCL, we are there because of the first time guests. That's all they talking about, like the generosity of our servanthood. Wow. I remember when I first came to OCL before I joined, and it was like in October, and it was a um a power preaching. It was a testing of your faith. And I remember it was like if you got a thousand dollars, you know, you drop this seed right here, this is your faith. And that was a generosity. I remember doing it. And wow. I remember the lead took the Delitia asked me, like, what kind of job you got? And I'm like, girl, I don't know. I'm just, you know, and I work in the mental health field, but I didn't even have a thousand, I had a thousand dollars, but that was just like limited there. Like I didn't have it to give it. But when I gave it, I see an increase. So when you give out of generosity, God's going to increase to make sure you continue to give. And that thousand dollars is going to continue to go up because he's going to give you way more. I want to say, yes. you always you always spoke that we're going to be speak, making money that we never thought we could. We're going to get this. We're going to get I'm making money that I never in my life thought I could. I'm making mm -hmm. money at a Ph.D. level, not a master mm -hmm. level. I only got a master, but I'm making Ph.D. because I remember when I first came to OCL and that testing of my faith, giving that thousand dollars, which I didn't have, but I gave it. <laughs> Now it's the multiply, and now I'm giving more because God has given me more, and I'm going to continue yeah. giving more and giving Glory more and giving God. more. So I I have wrote I have okay. wrote down a number a long time ago, like you're giving, and I already know God going to bring it to pass. I think I had wrote down like two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's what I wrote Glory down. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I want to give that. So I'm I'm knowing God they're going to open the doors for that twenty five million. So I already Amen. know he's gonna Lord open it. And I mark, mark my word tonight. I'm I'm that's kind of faith. I, I'm a big number person and I got Amen. a big God. So it's gonna happen. So I thank you for this teaching. It is coming to pass. It is good. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Wonderful oh. words. Thank you. Yes, oh, Lord. Sister Diana's hand is up. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, okay, cool beans. I was having issues with my Zoom before. But I um I love the fact that you always piggyback on children. Um, that's the generation. So I mm -hmm. we kind of correlated that around my household by reading a word and um giving and teaching them how to serve even the house, even each other, because it's about your heart. And one of the young ladies said something about first lady and her giving. It didn't matter what the amount, you didn't even have to have any. She would carry around change just for little kids if wow. they wanted something from the candy machine because she just never wanted them to not be able to, to say like, you know, if you want to give it to them. So her heart showed wow. just that heart. And I always look at her, even, even to this day, I don't care what it is. I... God has told me to give out whatever's in my, whatever you have in your purse, give it. And so that's what it's like. I don't think about it. Just going to the church, starting the church. The first major seed I sowed was the first one you asked us to, um, to pay off the church. I've never sold that amount of money ever. 
and God opened the doors for me. I can see him open the doors even from that, but it was because of my heart, because I love God and I love his people and I love his church. So your word tonight was really on time. It's really this confirmation. Like if you, you can't out give God, that's, that's something true. that we want, want our money. He wants to see that we're committed to him. And he said, test me. Would bring your money to the storehouse. See, I'm God. I'm gonna give it back. What you worried about? It, it doesn't belong to us. So I yep. think people just get a little scared when they hear about money because it's not about money. That's just a small portion of it. It's about your heart. It's about how much you're willing to sacrifice for God. So thank you for that, Pastor. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And, and glory to God. <laughs> All so right. I don't see any more hands up. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Sister Delithia, you have any announcement for the wedding? I know you have a marriage announcement. I do. I do. I do. Please like and share the Facebook post, the Eventbrite. Tell your friends, everyone. We have a chat real quick. Evangelist Kim, I'm not in a, in a place to speak out loud because I'm working right now, but I echo... The last time, uh, I'm, I make more than I deserve to make according to man's standards, but wow. God's favor is better than money. I've been worshiping and visiting OCF for many years, and I've always been blessed by the love of God that is in this community and Pastor Momo's teaching. May God continue to bless this body of believers. Amen. Thank That's you so much, Evangelist Kim. Okay. Amen. Amen. So, Thank you. Again, thank you, everybody, Deanna, Tawana, uh, everybody for their loving comments and everything. Uh, great word again, Pastor. On Saturday, please try to be there. Be ready for an awesome time. I also mentioned to all of the married people that we met with on Sunday, if you have any questions that you want to re and you want to re remain anonymous, just text them to me and I'll ask on your behalf. Um, but this is going to be a very intimate setting and topics will be talked about. We'll talk about the hard stuff and pastor's really, really good at breaking the ice and talking about the hard topics. So no topic is off limits. It's all about helping. And I'm just excited to see, I'm excited to learn. I'm excited to be in the midst of so many awesome people, especially pastor, all his years of knowledge and all his wisdom. I'm excited to be in that atmosphere along with the rest of you like, and share the Facebook like and share the Eventbrite, take the flyer and text it. Just text the flyer to whoever you want and invite them. It's easy, it's digital, and it's like very, very quick. So if you just text this flyer to five, five people, that will help us spread the word. And Pastor said something today that was really, really important. It's about helping marriages and helping people and saving some marriages and just building up people, building up their marriage, encouraging them and showing them it's not only them. You're not the only one that has went through it or is going through it. Um, Miss Shalane, you can share that same flyer on Instagram. It's just a picture. So it's a picture. You can save it to your phone. I can text it to you and you can share that to Instagram as well as Facebook. So thank you so much, sir. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you. Pastor Larry, do you have anything else? Is this OCF? Is this in the OCF app? You mean are, are you referring? Is the person referring to the teaching or what are they saying? Which one? The marriage seminar on Saturday. If it's going to be on OCF app, I how? Can is the flyer if, if on we're the going app? to stream it? If we're going to stream yeah. it. Uh, no, we we can't stream it because it'll be it's intimate. Exactly. No, so it's not out. going to be on OCF app. We are not going to be doing the streaming. I think that's what somebody is asking. Will it be on the app? It will not be there because we can't. Some of the things we talk about, we can't put that out there. The flyer. Yes, it's the flyer. Can... I can text you the flyer. So I'll text you and Shalane the flyer solo. Okay. Um, but the flyer is all over our Facebook page. If you just click on the flyer and just hit save to phone. You can save that image directly to your phone, and that's the flyer. Amen. 
All right, Pastor, nothing to add. Thank you very much for tonight. Thank you, sir. Oh, and then there's the Fast Track Road Track on Saturday, as well as um, Evangelism Tim going out, too. Okay. All right. So that's it, right? So thank you all so much for joining us tonight. So, Pastor uh, Larry, you can go ahead and close us then, okay? All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you and praise you again for everyone who has participated in the Bible study tonight. We thank you for Pastor. We ask, Father, that you continue to fill him to overflow and continue to give him the grace to share your word. Father, we also ask for grace to put into practice what we have heard tonight. Yes. Use it to convict us and to get us to commit more to serving Jesus with our time, with our resources, our money, and our attitudes. We bless you. Thank you, Father, for what you have done and what you're going to continue to do. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed. And for Amen. those of you who uh, want to give your tithes and your offerings. Oh, yeah, I forgot all about that. It's a service. So we can participate. Go ahead, please, Pastor Larry. Yeah, so this is a good opportunity. Uh, you can go to the OCF app or you can use uh, our catch app, which is OCF, dollar sign OCF 2024. And then um, use the OCF app. Those are the only two. I don't know if the... I don't know if Brother Charlie is in a is in a conference tonight, so I don't know if there's any way we can project the other means of giving, but use push pay, go to the OCF app and cash app. So that is that. Anything else, Pastor? No, thank you so much. I forgot all about that until you. Uh... Until you said it, yeah, it's it's a given opportunity. You can use your 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 church app. That's what I used. You can use um, Cash App, or like you say, go to the church website. These are opportunities. Also, back to school is an opportunity. Don't talk yourself out of it. Bye. Go there. I uh, I don't know. Can anybody talk about that? I know there are texts that have been sent out. And on that text there, you click it, and you can go there and and I don't know. Does anybody can anybody talk about that? It, they made it so easy for us to be able to give. Yeah, to send the text out, all you have to do is click on the link, and it will take you to the items that are available. You can pay for it, and it will be delivered to the church. Yes. Yeah, it's a simple process. Well, oh, I, uh, can I make a comment about that? about uh, giving to the smash uh, thing to make sure you look at the delivery date because I know that some of the delivery dates are going after the day of the, uh, the bath. Got it. So, so you have to be real careful about that because I almost clicked on for something and it's going past August. It's, it was promised maybe to be delivered by August 9th. Okay. And it needs to be delivered by the fourth, before the fourth, actually. Yes. So okay. you be careful with that. Okay. That's all I want to make that comment. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving tonight. I pray over you. I pray for your giving. The Lord Jesus is our high priest. He's the one we give, we present our offerings to. He is the high priest that receives our gifts. Uh, that the expression of our love. Jesus, we thank you for accepting our gift and worshiping the Father on our behalf. Thank you that the seed we sow is multiplied back to us. And uh, we see the impact in our businesses. We see the impact in our careers, in our finances. We grow in our finances. We see increase. We see promotion and advancement. And we give you all the glory and the honor Tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. We love you all. Thank you for joining us.